La Bohème portrays the free life and amusing antics of four young men struggling as artists in Paris in the 1900s, featuring a cast of professional opera singers from every corner of the world and a host of professional players from the Cairo Opera Orchestra. This special operatic performance will be led by principal conductor of the Cairo National Opera International acclaimed maestro and I gather there's going to be a lot of locals participating in this as well. It's all happening as part of the uh, the Aerial Arts Festival and it's all happening I gather in uh, Bali Buffet in Jackson's Hotel and I'm joined here in studio by Anne Jennings, uh, uh, artistic director uh, of the um, Opera, you're very welcome to the program, and, and we're joined also by Maestro Naira Nagy. Maestro Nagy, Maestro, you're very welcome. Thank you <laughs> to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about the rush to get into the studio and and the panic there. Uh, what's it all about? Which bit? The story, or yeah? Well, give us a bit about the story. Yeah, it's a love story, obviously. It's a love it's story. Opera. It's very beautiful. They meet. Uh, the Bohemians are really going against the system. I think in 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 Paris at the time, they're trying to be different. Um, they're not um, working according to convention. And uh, this little lady pops up to the flat upstairs to get a light for her candle. And within ten minutes, of course, she's in love with Rodolfo. And they sing a love aria and they head off for Act mm. Two. And for Act Two, yes, in the streets of Paris, in Momus Café, where they, everybody is having fun, uh, singing the streets. Uh, but in the beginning of, uh, of Act One, Rodolfo, is the, the, the tenor, knows that she's sick. And uh, after, the, after the, the Act Two, she's, uh, during the Act Three, she's becoming, she, she, know, she knew that she is sick and she has something in her... Uh, Actually, she gets a bit of a shock too, yes, doesn't she? Definitely. She overhears Rodolfo she, yes, saying in that, the third act, yeah, yeah, that she's actually. He says she has consumption. Yes, uh, TV he knew or that before her from the doctor, and uh, yes, yes, but and then she gets it. She overhears it, so of course she falls apart, and she dies in the end. Like oh. also, give away the end. Like oh, sorry, d- scribble, yeah. scribble that out. Scribble that out. <laughs> <laughs> to go to defibrillator and get her back to life. Uh. Yeah, we thought we could create maybe a, you know some antibiotic or something and get her well for the end, and you know they all live happily ever after. And it's all, all it's all it's all set in the 1900s. Was 1900s. It? Yeah, the 1800s. Yeah. No, 1900s. 1850 ish in oh, Paris. Yeah. yeah, and um, there's a lot of young people involved in the production yes. here as well. Oh yes, God, yeah. Who? How many? And and. As where? far as I know, we've about 27 urchins, if, if they all turn up. 27 urchins who are small little people <laughs> begging on the street is basically Oliver Twist. So right. they're running around the stage pickpocketing and doing all sorts of bad things in Act Two. And um, they come, one is from Seche O'Neill School in Bal Buffet. And of course, we have some from Letterkenny who come to our rehearsals here in Letterkenny. And we have a little school in Glen who are sending us over nine. That's terrific. Mm-hmm. Opera, how is it going down in this part of the world? Because I know that you're involved in quite a number of... It's, it's on the way up. It's on the way up. And I have to say, with great credit to Nair and the Cairo Opera Orchestra, who are acknowledging the fact that we are really on the way up. It's been six years of a struggle. People went <laughs> for, you know, opera. But now people are kind of, oh, yeah, OK, we're, you know, we've been to the opera and we're, we have it in Donegal, of course. Yeah. We're going to be the next Wexford Opera, I'm sure. And is, it, is, it, is it for the posh? No, Meyer is, is opera for the posh. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> so. Where has it gone wrong when it is perceived as being that by many? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm, what can I say about that? Help me a little bit. <laughs> so. People don't turn up for performances. They think the yeah. music is inaccessible, but the yeah. music is not. The thing they have to try. Yeah. They have to try. We have this struggle in Egypt. Definitely, we have the we have the the tradition of Italian opera since the 19th century with the old opera, since the composing of Aida, because it was originally the way to communicate. Uh, yes, I think I, I guess it was easier in the in the in the past, um, with having a lot of, of different kind of music now. Uh, and there was no competition. Definitely, they didn't have tele- you know the television, Tele- the media, so media went, in media in general. If they wanted entertainment, yeah. they went out. But opera is the highest art form. 
because it's the only one that combines all art forms, the voice, uh, the orchestra, mm. you know, it needs a conductor. Maybe that's why people think it's highbrow, but it's mm. not highbrow. No, we always say about opera, it, opera, it's coming from the verb operare in Italian, which is to operate all kinds of arts together in one form. Mm -hmm. So you have solo singers, choir, sing, choir uh, orchestra, ballet, uh, ballet sometimes, mm -hmm. Um, fine art like uh, for the decors, mm -hmm. for the props, for, so have all the arts together mm. to operate together to produce this performance. And Niagara, be careful about how you answer the next question, <laughs> but how are we in Donegal when it comes to uh, at what level we're at in terms of opera? Uh, yeah. I guess with all the things I have seen um, in, in recordings, video and from Anne, I guess we are going uh, on the right uh, path. How far up that path or down that path are we? <laughs> I can I cannot say how far because uh, you can produce good art in all levels. You can't tell the you truth, can. you know. You can't yeah. tell the truth. I, I am telling the can, truth. Can I, I have to let him off the hook. He came off the flight yesterday after 20 hours of flying, four hours yeah. of getting here, and a smashed double base off the airline. Oh. Yes, yeah. the double base was split in two on yeah. the airline. And this is what we've been doing, running around as panic. Is it and true? It, mm, is it insured? insured? Uh, no, it, it, it belongs to the Opera House, to right. the uh, Cairo Opera House. And oh, so it doesn't we will, uh, No, <laughs> I don't mean that. I was wondering why no, she didn't know how to do it. We will see with the airlines, we will see with the airlines because it's totally their fault. So we've had nothing but panic. Purnaya arrived after 20 hours of flying, no sleep. The musicians were diverted over Abu Dhabi, so what could they do? They arrived last night, we didn't rehearse yet. We haven't so actually was it, rehearsed. Was it in the hold or was you one of those people who carry it with you? Double no, not at all. It was in the... Yeah, in the it wasn't on the seat next to you or anything no, like that, no, because apparently some musicians do that. Mm. They do? Yeah. But, uh, uh, with, with cellies, with, with celli, okay, but yeah, yeah, the bus is too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Being kind of it's like a big mummy, you know, a big, yeah. big mummy thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, a double bass. <laughs> you, you didn't get the pump mummy, oh, he's uh, Egyptian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's another it's opera coming on here. So, in terms of, and from your perspective, then, opera here, how is it? How's it going? How's it working? Cause I think it's fantastic. Um, I think the reputation has snowballed over the years and I think people begin to understand that it takes a high level of commitment to your voice even. Our chorus is now, we do train, we do actually give vocal training in a group situation. So they learn about breathing, they learn about support and their voices have come on fantastically. So, you know, I heard a comment twice last year, God, I'd love to sing with them, but they're all trained singers. And I said, no, that's not true. They're all, everybody is from an ordinary walk of life. You know, we have doctors, we had solicitors, we have people who work in shops, we have people who, you know, are dress designers who've never, ever sung a note in their lives. Double bass, she's got solicitors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you say we, I, I, do you do you uh, do you have a school where you train people, or are you? I train them. Before, I train them before we we operate here in Letterkenny. We um, actually we're very very lucky because thanks very much to the Bethel Christian Foundation, they've given us their activities room, which is a huge room, and we rehearse there once a week. So we are very very grateful to those people who have you know really pulled out a lot of the stops for us. We couldn't we couldn't afford to rent if we if we tried, you know. So the show itself, talk to me a bit about when it's on and what's, what to look forward to. It's on on Friday and Saturday of next week, which is the 25th and the 26th. And it's at 8 p.m. in Jackson's in the Pyramid Suite. Isn't that just... Excuse me. You know, what, mm. how, how could you just, you know... Yeah. And uh, The Egyptians coming to the exactly. Pyramid. So. You're going to be performing in it. I'm singing Mimi. And we have Diana McLaughlin, who's an American soprano, singing Musetta. And what part do you play in them? I'm the one who snuffs it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why you knew so much about it. That's why I knew so much about it. So her. you don't survive to the end? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I die it, oh, yeah, at, the end, oh, at the no, end. At the end. Giving it away again. Uh, so is it, is it, uh, does it have all the components of uh, the arts? In it, I mean, it's got music, has it got laughter, has it got yes. serious, has it got everything? Absolutely. Actually, the opening of Act One is the four guys really having a hoot and they're jumping up on the tables, they're sword fighting. The opening of Act Four, same thing all mm, over again. Same. It's created to design the contrast between ha ha ha, here we're happy, we're getting drunk, we don't have the rent, the landlord comes in looking for the rent and he, of course, has, they don't have the money and they start hiding under blankets, etc. So it's all full of fun. The only serious bits are her. 
the love songs, but they're all tunes that people would recognize. Now, I would say definitely, it's very, very well known arias in the, in the middle, and there is a uh, f during the four acts also there is a very good uh, metaphor between cold and hot. So it is cold with all the streets of Paris in winter then, and hot with their love and things like that, and then cold with death, and then hot with laughter in the second. Uh, so there yeah. is always this this uh, paradox in the in the Puccini opera. There's a, there's yeah. a really great contrast, I have to say. Yeah. It's a very interesting way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, hot and cold. Yes, uh, this is something yeah. we have to think about during the music for the four acts. Yeah. We have to have this contrast between hot and cold. And even she has a fever and she won't go into exactly. the smoke because exactly. of the fever. Yeah. And I have to say, I need to say, we need to thank the Ministry of Culture and the Cairo Opera House mm. because the Ministry of Culture have paid for the musicians to come here. Mm. They have the paid. Ministry this Culture, is, yeah. yeah, this is an actual cooperation, collaboration. So this is putting us on the map. Terrific. But it, six years of struggle, we're now, thanks to these people and thanks yeah. to Nair for also coordinating and, you know, getting all of the papers through in the Opera House in Cairo and getting the permission and he, he's worked with quite a few people. So now I finally get to know why you really have come to Ireland. It's not about the opera at all, it's about the money. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly. going to have a holiday. He, <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> yeah, it's, not a, it's not a true holiday. We have rehearsals every day. Yeah. Two rehearsals every day. Yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have yeah. to take you on the wild Atlantic way around oh, the yeah. coast of Donegal before you go back. Exactly. How long are you here I love the landscape. I yeah. Love yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find yourself coming back on yourself. You'll be meeting <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and you'll be... You're, you, the 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 thing in your car will be telling you you're going south, when in fact the the signs will be telling you you're going north. <laughs> so it's a bit Irish, yes. but it works, yes. and very successfully too. Mm. So this brings the whole festival to a close, then, doesn't it? It does. It's the end of the festival. Um, Nair wouldn't be aware of all the festival end of things because he's collaborating with us as Northwest Opera. So, but we managed to get in at the end, and thanks to Eric Arts Festival who are also, you know, with us in this production. Um, and, of course, Jackson's Hotel, where would we be without them? They're housing the musicians and feeding them for the whole 10 days while they're here. So without this huge collaboration, it would never have been done. Tickets? 20 euro. Are available team. still? They're still available. I've heard they're going like hotcakes. That's what I've, I, I never ask the numbers. I don't want to know. I'm superstitious. But um, I, I heard through the grapevine they are actually no it's genuine they are that's terrific well i wish you well with it Dara, on your time here enjoy every moment of it and thank you very much indeed for coming in and talking to us on highland radio and enjoy the northwest of ireland have a really good time thank here you so much. and Anne, thank you very much indeed oh, yeah. and thank you for singing for me you were supposed oh, yeah. to yeah, sing yeah, and i then did well you, didn't i yeah you that yeah. was that was an excellent piece so beautiful it yeah. was actually ethereal yeah you have you my 60 euro whatever it was you have it you have it <laughs> thank, thank you very, very much, much indeed thank and you. thank you for listening to the sean doherty show this